Well, hello there, Maverick Traders. This is Rob Reinhold. It is the Currency Recap, and here we are in the middle of January. I wish I could say this has been a great trading January. It's been pretty good for crypto. For Forex, it has been a tough market. We've been saying you want to trade less, not more. In this session, we're going to go through what happened today, some of the news, look at the broad equity markets, and then we're going to dive into where we are right here, right now. Did we get a score change? We're in the middle of a pullback. We'll take a look at that. And then we're going to go through all the currencies, score them from the top to the worst, and we're going to pair up the best against the worst for our trade setups. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional Forex and crypto traders. Maverick Currencies is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional Forex and currency trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. Here is where we stood 24 hours ago when Ankit broke this down. Ankit said there is clear strength in the US dollar, there is clear weakness in the Aussie, Kiwi and Yen, and everything else was pretty much in the middle. Let's see how close that was. First, let's start off with news of the day. We had US retail sales come in. Stronger than expected, much stronger. Estimates were for 0.4, it came in at 0.6, much stronger than expected. We also had the UK CPI, surprisingly, after months and months of falling, it rose. Estimates were for 3.8 and it came in at 4. So the question is, is inflation going back up in the UK? Is that going to stall out what the BOE has done? We're just going to have to wait and see. And I'm just going to read this one, Middle East tensions. If you don't know what's going on, if you don't want to know what's going on, don't. If you do, there's tons out there. There is lots of stuff going on in the Middle East. And whenever that happens, it puts the market on the defensive. Typically, people sell the risky stuff and buy the safer stuff. If we take a look at what people did in currency today, you can see the pound. The pound was the beneficiary of that greater than expected CPI report. The pound was my favorite currency going into this week. I like the pound number one. And you can see it's been having a nice run. Euro is also tagging along with it. Swiss franc is not. So we, we typically these three move together. Whenever we see them not move together, we have to pay attention because this is those correlations breaking down. So Swiss franc that has been very strong did not want to rally along with it. We can see the dollar, decent gain on the dollar. It was the third best currency. Take a look at that yen. That yen is a clear short. We liked it. That was our favorite short for the week. So our favorite cross for the week was pound yen. And then look at Aussie Kiwi. I said this last week, I said, I don't trust them. They should be going up in this market. They haven't. Everything is in their favor. But again, we don't trust them. Aussie Kiwi, they look like they're wanting to head lower, even though we have a fairly bullish equity market on that. In the world of stocks, we have the SPX up about or down about half a percent. Now these are off their bottoms quite a bit. We'll take a look at the SPX chart and you're gonna see that we put in a very nice hammer candle today. And you know what, it just means that there's it's pulling back, but there's still some buyers out there. Crypto pulled back as well. We'll take a look at the crypto basket. Gold, that's a pretty big pullback in gold, uh, down 1%. Oil was down about two or 3% earlier in the day and it had a really nice turnaround intraday to close higher for the day. However, if you take a look at a longer term chart of gold, it's been moving, you know, three, four, five percent a day, all in the bottom of the $70 area. So not all that exciting. As I said, we had a pullback in the coins, Bitcoin down a percent, Ethereum down 2%. Check out Litecoin. Litecoin didn't want to go down. It's been the laggard. And I said, it would not surprise me if Litecoin was the strongest coin because it's playing a little bit of catch up. I'm not saying that that 0.22% is a strong move, but relative to the rest, it is. Let's take a look at this S&P chart. Now, the first thing I want to point out, and the first thing you see when you look at it like this, this is a high base. That's all this is, it's a high base. And we're pulling back from the high, we're in the middle. But if you weren't looking at this and you were just paying attention these last three days, the last three days have felt painful. They felt painful because the market had such big runs and the market has been so bullish. These, these pullbacks felt painful. This one was very, very painful, yet it just turned into be a very good buying opportunity. 
Take a look at these candles. They all have lower shadows, which means there's still people lurking out there on any down days. People are coming in and you can see by the end of the day, this was a possible reversal candle. We're going to need to see an up candle tomorrow. If we get a big green up candle and we close at our highs, I think that was a very good buy point. I think this area right here is a very good buy point because my premise is we do break out of the top of this range eventually in some time. We take a look at our market score. We're at a plus two. If we close at our bottom here, if, we, if today's candle closed on this bottom, I would have done a plus one. It recovered. It's very close to a 20 period moving average. So we're at a plus two. So we backed off a little bit off that plus two, plus three area. Let's go in and jump in and look at the calendar, see what's on tap for the next 24 hours. Australian employment. That's the next big report. The Aussie has been weak. We've had a couple of good news events off the Aussie and it can't rally. Looking at this, I would love for this to be slightly better than expected. Have the Aussie have a rally. I would love to have a rally to short into. It looks like it wants to continue to go lower. After that, there's really nothing on the calendar here for the next 24 hours. Let's jump in and take a look at some currencies, the ones that look interesting, and the ones that are just sitting there, let's just leave those on the shelf. Let's first take a look at the dollar. The dollar was our strongest one, and you can see this is a daily chart. Let's go to a four hour chart. You can see over the last 24 hours, it's been strong. It runs up, hesitates a bit, runs up, hesitates a bit. There's nothing telling us that this trend is over. You want to be looking for a dollar long. We'll take a look at some dollar crosses here, but the trend is saying and the velocity is saying, Hey, this is to the upside. We come and look over at the yen. It's the same. It's the opposite thing. So we're definitely going to be looking to pair up dollar yen. That's a very good possibility. We have the pound is doing really well. Look at this high base breakout. These are why we love high bases at Maverick. We absolutely love them. You could even call this more of an ascending triangle, but look, they're just sister patterns. The breakouts are fantastic. Yeah, we've had a big breakout and yeah, it's probably a little bit tired. You want to be a buyer. You want to be a buyer on a pullback here. That's what this chart is saying. I'm going to pop in on CAD because I just want to show you how uninteresting CAD has been. I have been completely disinterested in CAD for a very long time. And if we can poke our head out, I'll start to get interested. But this candle here with this long upper shadow, uh, that's telling me it's not ready to go quite yet. Ozzy looking terrible. Let me jump to a four hour chart looking terrible. Yes. At this point we run down, we base, we fall, we base. I would love, I would love a short term rally to sell into. Kiwi was our second favorite here on the short side. And you can see it's basing on the bottom here. It just had a fall. Love to have a little rally on this as well. I'm going to jump in to take a look at Ethereum because Ethereum was also something I wanted to watch over the week. I talked about if we came down here, found some support and gave a nice candle that would be worth looking at. This was a nice candle. This right here is a nice candle and it's, it's a good buy point. It just is. It doesn't mean that it's always going to work, but technical analysis says makes a new high pulls back to a support level. That's it. That's a good buy price. We didn't get a nice follow through candle. So if you're in this trade, I get it. It's not a good follow through candle. You better have your stop, you know, likely under this support under a moving average, again, tied to something. I want to give up on this yet. It's still in a sort of base pattern here. We're still, we're still absolutely fine. Sometimes these I, I make, they make what's called a W bottom. They come down and then they bounce then they fall back down and then they really take off for good. You don't always get the V bottom. I know the V bottoms are, are a favorite. They're easy to, they, you don't have to sit through any pain. They're fantastic, but you don't get those all of the time. Based on where we started off the day, we haven't really changed much. I mean, Aussie, Kiwi, and, and Yen are still looking like the weakest ones out there. We still have the majority of things in the middle, even though some of the cryptos have weakened a bit, but we really have seen the pound jump higher. So the pound and dollar look to be the trade going forward. And really you can pair them against any of these. I like the Aussie, but I really want to see a rally to sell into off of that Employment report, a rally and a fail. I'm definitely looking at that. Let's go take a look at some of those charts. 
First up, my favorite here is going to be Pound Aussie. Let's take a look at it on a daily chart. You can see we're really taking off. We're clearing out of this big band of resistance. I mean, look how big this band of resistance has been. And, you know, we might not be out of it yet, but that's a lot of stuff to get through. If it does clear through that, I don't see any reason why we don't get up into this 196 area, maybe even 195 at the bottom. That's still giving us plenty of meat on the bone on this one. The big question is, where is the entry price? This is a daily chart. If we go in, we say, okay, where's the entry price? We want to get in off of high bases, pullbacks, stuff like this. So here was a nice high base. It broke out. Here's a nice pullback. It came back. Here's a nice high base. It broke out. Okay, we're not at a great place here, and that's why I would love to wait. And if I got my way, and I always say this, if I could write the story for what happens on this trade, and the reason I'd love to say this is because then you're really thinking about, okay, what do I want to happen in the future? And if it doesn't happen, then all of a sudden, you're not going to try to chase it because it doesn't fit the story you you wrote. So I always have to say, if I could, if I could have put in what happens... The Aussie employment report comes in a little bit better than expected. Everyone loves the Aussie for about an hour. I would love to see this pull all the way back to 192. I don't think it's going to get there. I just don't. That's a pretty big move. And if it's that big of a move, I don't know if I actually want it in that case. So then I'm looking at this level, you know, one, 193.20, you know, back to the bottom of this little consolidation in this area. It's not a great entry point. Maybe 192.50 at this moving average. Look, I want to see it come down and I want to see it then bounce. I'm not just going to buy it indiscriminately at 192.50. That's not what we do. I'm going to let it bounce at 192.50. And if I get a green confirmation candle, kind of like we saw in Ethereum, I'll take a position. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But this one is one of my favorites. I want to also take a look at dollar yen. Dollar yen is just so, I don't want to say simple. It's not simple, but it's just so classic. It's just so, it's its there. And when it's moving, it moves so well. It just moves in such great trends. And we got a clear breakout of a basing area. And we're off to the races. How long is it going to go? We don't know. But right now, there's no question. The momentum is to the upside. So if you are a shorter term trader, I think this is the one to be in. This one looking, look, there's no great entry here. We've run up. I'd let it cool off a bit. Base, pull back, just a little bit. We're not seeing much on this. Again, we're seeing stuff like this and this. We're not getting wonderful entry points. Sometimes it's more important just to get on the train than to pick exactly the right place. Look, I know we got to be disciplined, follow our rules. But these are the trades that, you know, tend to continue to work really well. Wrapping this up, we're getting a pullback in equities. It feels, it feels nasty. It feels bad, but it's not that bad. When you look at a chart, it's not that bad at all. And we got long lower, sh lower wicks on all the candles that we're closing off of the lows. It's telling me that this market at some point is going to catch a bid and likely to break out to the upside. I could be wrong, but that is the world of trading. We deal in probabilities and probabilities are saying this is nothing more than a bull pullback. The yen looks terrible. I think the yen is a great short. Love to see better entry on it. But this week, you really should be looking for entries in short yen trades. And tonight, we are having our year in review. We do this every single January. We go through the year. We go through some of the predictions we made. And then we make predictions for 2024. It's always fun. I make these grand, bold predictions. And then I literally don't open the presentation until next year to see what predictions I made. And I'm like, oh, that was actually a good prediction. Oh, that one was awful. It's always fun to get set up the year. You know, as a trader, you don't get married to anything. So whatever I say tonight is going to be interesting and I call it cocktail talk. And that's really what this session is. It's a chance for all of our traders to get together, pat ourselves on the back, you know, talk about what's going on and what's possibly gonna happen in 2024. And then it's back to the grind, systematic trading, where you go back and you trade your system. Thanks for joining me. Goodbye, everyone.